Today, we'll look at Intel's third quarter results. At the conference call, Pat Gelsinger, CEO of Intel, stated that even though the revenue fell again in the third quarter, it was higher than anticipated. And what's more important for shareholders are the technological and operational milestones that Intel has achieved in process, products, Intel Foundry services, and AI strategy. Then he provided eight specific examples and business updates. To begin with, he mentioned that the IDM 2.0 transformation strategy is on track, evidenced by the initial shipment of Meteor Rec chip, which utilizes 4 nanometer technology. This achievement holds significance because it demonstrates Intel's success in ramping up production using EUV. This high volume EUV manufacturing has commenced in the US and European fabs, and Intel has gained a 20% capital efficiency advantage by implementing EUV tools. Furthermore, the Intel 3 process is progressing as planned and is set to be manufacturing ready by year end. This readiness will support products such as Sierra Forest and Granite Rapid. After this 3 nanometer, Intel will move into Angstrom era with Intel 20A. Currently, Intel aims for manufacturing readiness on Intel 20A by the first half of 2024. And this plan seems feasible with Arrow Lake chip, which is based on this 20A, is already functional with Windows. Also, Intel already reached a critical milestone with the Intel 18A, making it available to external customers. As a result, first products on Intel 18A will enter production in early 2024, with Clearwater Forest for servers, Panther Lake for clients, and IFS test chips. And this eventual manufacturing readiness for 18A is expected in the second half of 2024. And this completes their five nodes in four year journey. Intel is not just making chips smaller, but is also applying new technologies. For example, two key innovations, Ribbon FAT and PowerVIA have been introduced, marking significant changes in transistor and process architecture. Furthermore, there are ambitious plans to lead the semiconductor industry by installing gas substrates and high NA EUV tools at the fab in Oregon. Additionally, advanced packaging is generating increased interest, particularly among AI chip companies. Notably, two customer AI designs have already been awarded for advanced packaging, and more are expected by year end. It's also important to note that major project proposals worth over $100 billion for US manufacturing and research investments have been submitted. Regarding the foundry business, a major customer has committed to both Intel 18A and Intel 3, supported by a substantial prepayment to expand capacity. Notably, this customer is achieving impressive power, performance, and area efficiency in their designs. In addition, contracts with two additional Intel 18A customers have been recently finalized. Furthermore, the ongoing process with the next major customer is anticipated to advance to commercial contract negotiations. Lastly, Intel notes that an upcoming IFS industry event is scheduled for Q1 2024, where more updates on the Foundry business will be presented. He also highlighted AI in Edge will bring AI everywhere, envisioned that these AI workloads will be a key driving force behind a $1 trillion semiconductor TAM by 2030. In response to the growing trend toward local inferencing for data privacy and cost efficiency, Intel offers AI solutions tailored for edge devices. For example, Intel has formed a strategic partnership with Dell to integrate the Gaudi AI Accelerator into next-generation power edge systems. While the industry has seen shifts in wallet share between CPUs and accelerators, along with some server inventory burn, signs of normalization are expected in the fourth quarter. In light of these trends, Intel is actively working to capture a growing share of the accelerator market with Gaudi. Moreover, to solidify its commitment to AI innovation, Stability AI is collaborating closely with Intel. Together, they are building one of the world's largest AI supercomputers, leveraging the 4th gen processors and Gaudi 2 AI Accelerator. Looking forward, Gaudi 3 is set to launch next year, and in 2025, Intel is planning the release of Falcon Shores, a platform that combines GPU and Gaudi capabilities. Switching gears, the client computing group had a robust quarter, surpassing expectations for three consecutive quarters. Furthermore, Intel anticipates solid sequential growth in PC consumption, 
aligning with Intel's four-year 2023 PC consumption projections that were established in the first quarter. Also, Intel introduced the Intel Core Ultra processor, marking the dawn of the AI PC era. This processor incorporates cutting-edge features like Forbero's 3D packaging technology and an integrated NPU. Lastly, Intel's smart capital strategy centers on efficiency and value creation for shareholders. As a result of this, the company is on track to achieve substantial cost reduction of $3 billion this year. Furthermore, as part of its efforts to optimize its assets and to free up cash, Intel is taking several strategic actions. For instance, the company is diversifying its pluggable motor segment within the silicon photonics business. In addition, Intel has welcomed TSMC as a minority investor in its IMS nanofabrication business, which will operate as a standalone entity beginning January 1st. These transactions complement the already successful spin-off of Mobileye, which continues to thrive as a separately listed company. Moving on to financials, net revenue for the third quarter was $14.2 billion, an 8% decrease from a year ago. Dividing this revenue into segments, first, Client computing generated $8 billion, a 3% decline from last year. Data center and AI segment generated $3.8 billion, down 11% year-over-year. Network and Edge generated $1.5 billion, down 32% from last year. Mobileye generated $530 million, up 18% year-over-year. And finally, the Foundry services generated $311 million, which is a substantial increase from just $78 million last year. But obviously, not even close to its potential yet. Next, research and development cost for the third quarter was $3.8 billion, which is down 10% year over year. This decline was a result of various cost cutting measures, despite higher incentive based cash compensation. Other operating costs were $1.3 billion, down 23% year over year. Despite the revenue decrease, costs decreased even more, so the operating income showed some improvement. In the third quarter, the total operating loss was $8 million, which is much less than the loss of $175 million a year ago. By looking at segment operating incomes, the data center segment turned positive, and client computing segment generated a very substantial $2 billion of EBIT thanks to the PC market turnaround. CapEx in the third quarter was $5.7 billion, up 21% from last year, showing continued investments in the foundry fabs. Now, we'll move on to the Q&A section. First, CEO Gelsinger noted that, that ARM and Windows alternatives have historically had insignificant roles in the PC business and are not seen as significant competitors at the moment. Also, Intel's strong momentum with upcoming product launches like Meteor Lake, Arrow Lake, and Luna Lake all offer improved performance and capabilities, and so Intel will strengthen its recently weakened position. These new chips are not just improved versions of predecessors, but can be considered AI-enhanced. And Intel expects over 100 million of these AI-enhanced x86 PCs in the market in the next two years. On the other hand, ARM is an important potential client for Intel's foundry business. Next, management claim that Gaudi is expanding rapidly. For example, they emphasize the focus on inferencing for AI, and this strategic direction resulted in the partnership with Dell where Xeon and Gaudi chips are combined for inferencing and training workloads. Moreover, AI is seen as a broad play, encompassing edge, client devices, on-premise data centers, and the cloud. And Intel's unique position across these various areas present a substantial opportunity to benefit from the growth of AI workloads across various computing environments. Next, despite competitive pressures resulting in a loss of data center market share, Recent quarterly performance exceeded expectations. This is due in part to products like Sapphire Rapids being introduced more rapidly, featuring higher prices and increased core counts, thereby elevating the ASP per socket. Intel's strategic response to competition includes a roadmap featuring products like Emerald Rapids and Gen 5, all expected to contribute to higher ASPs due to increased core counts. With rising average sale price and a robust product roadmap, Intel remains optimistic about its business direction, and customers are recognizing Intel's growing competitiveness. Although Intel still generated a net operating loss this quarter, CEO showed confidence in turnaround. More specifically, 
he showed confidence in reaching 60% gross margin in long term as the five nodes in four years becomes a reality. For example, as discussed in the first part of the conference call, the Foundry business has already started optimizing operations, boosting revenues, and signing up customers. Finally, we picked two news that Intel shareholders should be aware of. First, Intel has partnered with Accenture to provide 34 open-source AI reference kits, which are designed to simplify AI deployment for developers. These kits include model code, training data, machine learning pipeline instructions, and API components to optimize AI in cloud and edge environments. Open-source AI tools like these help users to easily build upon them and learn from them. Intel's kits cover a range of solutions, including visual quality inspection, conversational AI chatbots, predictive asset health analytics, medical imaging diagnostics, document automation, and AI structured data generation. Next, Intel's FAB34 production milestone is another proof point that Intel is executing on its plan to deliver five nodes in four years and to usher in a new generation of leadership products. For example, Intel's investments in Ireland, along with existing and planned investments in Germany and Poland, are creating a first-of-its-kind, end-to-end, leading-edge semiconductor manufacturing value chain in Europe. So basically, Intel is helping Europe to be more independent from current semiconductor manufacturing value chain that focuses very heavily on East Asia, like Taiwan and South Korea. Lastly, Intel's operation in Israel is doing okay so far, despite the recent geopolitical events there. Okay, that's it for updates on Intel this quarter. And please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more updates like this on other big tech companies. Thanks guys. Bye.